I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear Dad yelling. Let's go. I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide, and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls, the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August. I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls, and I'll give you a tour. My hobby. Let's see. Today I might go fly a kite, or maybe go for a swim. It is hot outside, and I don't know what to do. My mom tells me that I should do something that I like doing on hot days. Since our house is nice and cool. I guess I'll stay inside and work on my hobby. My hobby is something that not a lot of people do. I make and collect bookmarks. To make my bookmarks, I use stickers and special art pencils to draw. I buy the stickers at a mall, usually in a card store. The art pencils are bought in an art store. To make the bookmarks, I start with a piece of paper. I measure out how big I want the bookmark to be with a ruler. I once made a bookmark so big that it couldn't even be used in a very big book. After I measure it, I draw a line so that I can cut it straight. Sometimes I use fancy scissors that cut zigzag or frills. Then I start to decorate them. I like to draw cartoons and flowers on my bookmarks. Sometimes I even put real flowers on them. A lot of the time, I write little sayings on the bookmarks. I like to give my bookmarks to friends and family. Sometimes I even sell my bookmarks to people. I like my hobby. I can draw whatever I want on the bookmarks. Maybe sometime in the future, I will be a famous bookmark maker, and even have my own store. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I'd travel the world. I would go to the highest mountain. I would swim the deepest sea. I would probably buy a lot of clothes because I love clothes. More than anything, though, I would want to visit Ireland. I want to see the rolling hills and the green, green grass that everyone talks about. When I think of Ireland, I think of where my family came from many years ago. I am almost all Irish.
and I would love to see my family over in Ireland. If I had a million dollars, I would buy a Mustang or a Pontiac Sunbird car. I would buy a nice house with a big backyard and an outdoor and indoor pool. I would love to take my family wherever they wanted to go. I would buy them wonderful presents too. However, I know that money does not buy happiness. It does not buy you friends or family. It may bring some happiness only for the moment, but in the long run, your family is what will be there for you if you love them and are there for them. If I had to pick between a million dollars and my family, I would pick my family. The million dollars is a nice dream. If that dream ever comes true and I do get a lot of money, I hope I would use it wisely. A picnic. What a great day for a picnic! We're not only having a picnic. We're having a big bike ride too. We did this last year with a lot of friends. Also, it was really fun. We meet quite early in the morning in a pretty little town. The town is where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario in Canada. The town's name is Niagara on the Lake. Then all of the people, fifty or more. Get on their bikes or rollerblades. We go on a bike path beside the river. The path we take is about eleven kilometers or six miles long. There are a lot of people using the path too. We usually stop for an ice cream treat near the end or where we turn around to go back to our cars. It is just before the park where we will have our picnic, and a steep hill. Many of the men and boys go up the hill. Most of the women and children go back to their cars. The ride takes about two hours plus whatever time we take at the ice cream store. After the ride is finished, we go to the park. We have a delicious potluck lunch. Potluck means everyone brings some food to share with the others. We eat, rest, talk, and laugh. After we've cleaned up, some of us climb the tower that is there, remembering a war at that place and its general. It is a steep climb, over one hundred steps. We usually end the day with a fun game of baseball or soccer. Finally, we pack up our stuff. Tired and dirty, we head for home with good memories swimming in our heads. Working in my yard, I live in a house that has a small yard around it. In my yard, there is a lawn and a garden. There is also a sidewalk that leads to my front door, and a driveway that leads to my garage. Throughout the year, I work to maintain my yard. During the summer, I cut the grass that grows in my yard using a lawn mower. I like the smell of the grass when it has just been cut. But it's better not to cut the grass too short. When the weather is dry, I also put water on the lawn and garden, so that the grass and flowers can grow. During the autumn, many leaves fall from the trees in my yard. I use a rake to collect the leaves from the lawn. Then I can put the leaves into bags. I can use the leaves to make fertilizer. When I was a kid, I didn't like the job of raking leaves, but now I don't mind it. Another job during the autumn is to remove flowers from the garden before cold weather arrives. During the winter, there is no work to do in the lawn 
or garden because they are covered in snow. But I need to keep the snow off my sidewalk and driveway. Whenever it snows, I use a shovel to clear the snow from the sidewalk and the driveway. Sometimes it snows a lot. If I didn't shovel the snow, it would soon be impossible to get into my house. During the spring, the snow melts. I clean up my yard by sweeping away the dirt and by removing weeds from the lawn and garden. I also put flowers back into the garden. It's nice to see them again after the long, cold winter. When spring comes, the grass grows very quickly, so I need to cut the grass quite often. Working in the yard can be very satisfying work. It's so nice when the lawn and garden are looking green and healthy. Early morning. <gasps> Yawn! I'm so tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mom has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl, she says. It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mom yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. Okay, I'll get up, I shriek. The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face, and then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal anymore. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye-bye. The wedding. We went into the church and sat down. There were pretty flowers at the front. There was beautiful organ music playing. The church was full of people dressed up nicely. Everyone was waiting to see the beautiful bride walk up the aisle. A hush, an intake of breath. There she was. Oh, she was so beautiful. She had a lovely long white dress with pretty lace and beads. Her hair was swept up off from her face. There were curls flowing down her back. Instead of a veil, she had little flowers in her hair. Her bouquet of tiny flowers was very, very pretty. Her dad looked very proud of her. He looked just a little sad, too. At the front of the church, the groom stood waiting. He had a beautiful, tender smile on his face. He took his bride's hand as her dad left her there. They smiled at each other. The minister read, prayed, and offered some words of advice to the lovely couple. Someone sang a pretty song. 
the groom slipped the simple wedding band on the bride's finger. She struggled a little to put a band on his finger. Pretty soon the minister said they were now husband and wife. They kissed. We all stood as they walked down the aisle to live the rest of their lives together as Mr. and Mrs. We cried. The Perfect Place There is a place in my mind that is pure. Everything there is beautiful. Many flowers grow, and the grass is very green. The clouds are always white and fluffy. The tree's branches sweep the earth floor. You can hear the sound of a waterfall. It is roaring with life, and the water races. A bird calls in the distance, and as you listen, the sound gets closer. A flapping quite near makes me turn and look. A great, magnificent eagle flies over my head. The strength I see in his powerful wings amazes me. I am never thirsty or hungry. I live off the beauty that surrounds me in this perfect place. I walk on trails that lead me to breathtaking places. The beach is my favorite spot to end up. The sand between my toes is soft and cool. I love to lie down on the sand. I watch the sun go down. Sometimes the sun is a brilliant orange. The world seems like it is on fire. Waves lull me to sleep. The seagulls wake me up. In this perfect place I have learned so much. The animals and their homes are so precious. I have learned to respect the animals. They were here first. The sounds, smells, and sights are too perfect and full of life. There is no war here, no anger or stress. I don't have to worry about pollution or destruction. My perfect world exists only in my head. Maybe if we all work hard, my fantasy can become real. Visiting the Zoo When I was a kid, I always enjoyed visiting the zoo. My family lived far away from the zoo, so we didn't go there very often. But whenever we went to the zoo, I always had a fun and interesting time. Some of the animals were very large. Of course, the elephants were huge, and they had such an unusual appearance, with their big ears and their long trunk and tusks. The giraffes were very tall, with long necks that reached high into the trees. Some of my favorite animals were big cats. The lions looked very powerful with their big teeth and paws. The tigers were just as big and strong with yellow and black stripes. But the bears were even larger than these cats. The polar bears, with their bright white fur, liked to swim through the water. The grizzly bears had brown fur and liked to roam around on land. The animals from Australia seemed very unusual. The kangaroos, with their strong legs and long tail, could jump great distances across the ground. The baby kangaroo could go inside its mother's pouch. Another Australian animal, the koala bear, crawled slowly in the trees where it ate leaves. The monkeys and apes were also very interesting. In many ways, they reminded me of people. Some of the monkeys were very small. They could use their arms, legs, and tail to swing through the trees. Some of the apes were very large. 
The gorilla was the largest of all. Sometimes a big gorilla would stand up and pound his fists on his chest. To see all the animals at the zoo took almost a whole day. By the end of the day, I was very tired from walking around. But I was also very happy to see all the amazing animals from places around the world. The dentist appointment. My dentist called my house the other day. He told me I needed my teeth cleaned. I set up an appointment to see him on Saturday, June the 10th. When I got to my dentist's office, I had to sit in the waiting room. There were other people ahead of me. They finally called my name. I went into his room and sat down on a big blue chair. They leaned it back. A bright light was turned on. It hurt my eyes, so I closed them. My dentist asked me to open my mouth. I did. I thought my mouth was very big, but he told me to open it even wider. Soon he began poking around to see if I had any cavities. He flossed my teeth and put fluoride around my teeth too. The fluoride tasted like bubblegum. I had to spit into a dish-like bowl. It squirted out water. My dentist kept asking me questions. I couldn't answer because there were weird tools in my mouth. When I tried answering back, he seemed to understand, though. His helper came into the room. She asked me to open my mouth again. I had to clamp down on something that felt like rubber. She put a big camera-type machine right next to my cheek. She did this on the other side of my face as well. They took two pictures of my teeth. It was really cool. The dentist told me my teeth were perfect. I didn't have any problems. I could go home. See you next year, he said. Daydream Little Annie was very bored one lazy afternoon. She had nothing to do. She had already played with her brothers in the sandbox and had tea with them and her dollies, too. She had baked chocolate chip cookies with her mom and even tasted one. They were very good, she thought. Now Annie was trying to figure out what else she could do to pass the day away. Little Annie decided that she would go to her favorite spot in the world, the green grassy field full of daisies beneath the great oak tree. She took a red and white blanket with her. She laid it down on the ground, and then she lay down on it. She lay there looking at the clouds, fluffy and white. She saw bunnies, huge gray elephants, and scary-looking crocodiles. Soon little Annie was drifting in and out of clouds and reality. The clouds started dancing with her, begging her to come and play. She got up from her blanket and joined the clouds. They flew over rooftops of all of the village people, swam with the fish in the lake, and said hello to all of the birds that they passed by. Little Annie was having so much fun. The clouds had formed into a chariot, so little Annie could drive if she wanted to. She drove over a rainbow that was bright in the sky. Then she shot through the branches of her friend's spruce tree. Annie suddenly came to a stop. Hearing someone call her name, Annie looked around. She blinked once, twice, and finally everything came into focus. Her brother was tugging at her leg, wondering why she was staring into outer space with a big grin on her face. Oh! Little Annie said, not really knowing that she had been sitting there all along. 
my friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms, where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem, and I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. On Friday afternoons, she makes popcorn for everyone. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend and talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. The musician. There once was a little girl named Rain Angel. She loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own and looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano. She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her. Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. The circus. Wow. A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. 
I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store. And I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section. I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef, and sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section, where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta, such as macaroni and spaghetti, and of course you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. A day at the beach. When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. 
Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles. Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand. Building sand castles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sand castle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket. And feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach and enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day. Making cookies. Mmm, something smells good. My friend's mom is making cookies. They are chocolate chip, my favorite. I think I'll go home and ask my mom if we can make cookies too. I run all the way home and rush through the door. I yell, "Mom, mom!" She comes out from her bedroom, her eyes wide. "What?" she answers, a little worried. I breathlessly ask if we can please, pretty please, make cookies. She smiles and says, "I guess so." Yes, I reply. First, mom tells me to get out the cooking stuff, so I get out the mixer and bowl, the measuring cups and spoons, and the cookie sheets. Then she tells me to get out the recipe book. I remind her that the recipe is on the chocolate chip package. Right, she says. Then she asks me to look at the recipe and get out the things we need, like flour, sugar, and butter. We set the oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we mix all the flour and other stuff ingredients together. Last, we added the chocolate chips. We drop the batter by big teaspoons full onto the cookie sheets. We set the timer for 12 minutes and just sit back and enjoy the good smell. The buzzer rings. We take the cookies out. Oh, do they look good! We don't even wait for them to cool down. Both mom and I get a big glass of cold milk and two big warm cookies each. Yum yum! Want to join us? I want to dye my hair green. Many of my friends have dyed their hair different colors. I don't mean normal hair colors like brown or black. My friends have dyed their hair orange, purple, and blue. I told my mother that I would like to dye my hair green. I explained to my mother that I would only use food coloring. The green would not last forever. My mother said that dyeing your hair was a silly fad. She said that I would not look good with green hair. I said that if I couldn't dye my hair green, maybe I could get a nose ring. My mother said no. I said that maybe a tattoo on my arm would be nice. My mother said no way. My mother said that she did some crazy things when she was a young girl. She said that she used to iron her hair to make it straight. That sounds quite boring to me. 
My friend Joan came over. Her hair is dyed bright pink. My father said, Nice hair, Joan. I don't think that he really meant it. My mother says that when I am an adult, I can dye my hair whatever crazy color I like, but for now, she would like me to leave my hair its natural color. I tried to tell her that all my friends were doing it. My mother asked, If all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you do it too? I said, No. I think I'll have to wait to have green hair, but maybe by the time I'm old enough to dye my hair green, I won't want it that color. My mother says that fads change all the time. One day something might be popular, and the next day it's not in style at all. I'll just have to live without green hair for now. I wonder what the fad will be next month. Why do people dislike other people? Some people don't like other people just because they look different. I think that is silly. I don't think that it is fair to judge someone by the way they look. Some people look very nice, but they are mean or cruel. Some people look very ordinary, but they are incredibly nice. I remember when I was in grade one. I saw a girl across the room. She had a mean look on her face. I thought to myself that she was probably not a very nice person. I stayed away from her and played with the other children. Then we had to play a game, and the teacher said that she would pick partners for us. The teacher picked the girl with the mean face as my partner. I didn't think that the game would be much fun at all with a partner who seemed as mean as that girl. I walked up to her and said hello. The girl's face changed. She smiled at me and she began to talk to me. Her mean face disappeared. We had lots of fun playing the game. We laughed a lot and enjoyed each other's company. That girl became my best friend. Now, when I look at her, I see what is inside her. Sometimes she doesn't smile, but I know what she is like. She is a kind and funny person. I have learned that you can't judge a book by its cover. It is not fair to dislike someone just because they don't look like you want them to look. You have to get to know a person. It doesn't matter to me what color a person's skin is. It doesn't matter to me if they are short or tall, skinny or fat, or happy or sad looking. I judge people by how they treat me, and I try to treat people like I would want to be treated. The birthday gift. It is going to be my father's birthday. What can I give him? I don't have much money. I have looked all through the stores, and I have not found anything that I think he would like or that I can afford. I have thought very hard about what to buy for him. I thought that he might like some candy, but my father really doesn't eat many sweets. I thought that he might like a new shirt, but he has lots of clothes. I can't afford a new car or computer for him. I was watching him on the weekend. He cut the grass, washed the car, took out the garbage, weeded the garden, and watered the plants. I got an idea. I went to my room and took out some paper. I cut out pieces of paper and I wrote on them. I wrote on one piece of paper that I would wash the car every weekend for the summer. I wrote on another piece that I would take out the garbage every week for the summer. I also wrote that I would cut the grass, weed the garden, and water the plants every week for the summer. I made a birthday card for my dad, and I put the pieces of paper inside it. I went downstairs and gave my gift to my dad. My dad thought that the gift was very thoughtful. He said that it was a gift from the heart. I did all those things for my dad all summer. 
He said that he had a lot of free time because I helped him so much. My dad and I are good friends. I don't mind doing things for him because I know that he is always there to help me out. A good gift doesn't have to be something that costs a lot. My dad says that the best gifts are the ones that show how much you care for the other person. I'm glad my dad liked his gift. New Year's Day. On New Year's Day, people start a new year. Many people make resolutions. They resolve to be better people. Some people decide that they will lose weight so that they can be healthier. Some people decide to give up smoking. They also want to be healthier. There are all kinds of resolutions that people make. Some people try not to lose their tempers. Some people say that they will work harder. There are people who try to give up bad habits. Every year, my brother says that he will stop biting his nails. He stops biting his nails in January, but by February, he always starts again. That is the thing about New Year's resolutions: people seldom keep them. Everybody starts out with good intentions, but it is very hard to stick with them. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I find that I just break them. I just work day by day to break my bad habits. I know that I eat too many sweets every day. I just try to resist them. I think that every day is a new day, regardless of whether it is New Year's Day or not. Bad habits are hard to break. The best thing is never to start any bad habits. I don't know if my brother will ever stop biting his nails, but I know that each January he intends to stop. Maybe one of these New Year's days he'll get over that habit. If I could fly, I sometimes imagine what it would be like if I could fly like a bird. Just imagine what it would be like to soar into the sky, flying high above the trees. You could stand on high rooftops and never be afraid of falling. You would see so many things as you flew over rooftops and forests. You would feel incredibly free as you traveled from place to place, not bothered by road signs or traffic jams. If I could fly like a bird, I would start from my backyard and travel through town. I would look down on the houses and factories. When I got tired, I would land in a field and take a nap. I would travel above rivers and follow them as they wound along and emptied into lakes and oceans. I would fly above parks and I would call out to the children as I flew high above them. I would dip and dive as I flew. I would soar up high and dive down low, so that I could almost touch the treetops. Have you ever flown? I know that you can't fly like a bird, but you might have taken an airplane ride. When you're in an airplane, you pass through clouds. It is exciting to take an airplane ride. I love taking airplane flights. I like to look down at the earth. When you are up that high, everything below you looks tiny. That's the closest I'll get to flying like a bird. But I can still use my imagination and spread my wings and soar high above the world, just like a bird. What I look for in a friend. What is it that makes somebody your friend? Some people are nice, and you have fun with them. Some people are nice to talk to, but they don't become special to you. Some people become very close to you. Those people are the ones who become your good friends. Did you ever wonder why certain people do become your good friends? Friends usually have something in common. Often, friends enjoy doing the same things as each other. Maybe they like the same sports or the same music, 
or maybe they can even talk about problems or schoolwork. Friends usually find a common bond. Friends share ideas and listen to each other. Sometimes people who don't have similar interests even become friends. You can learn a lot from a person who likes different things than you. The most important thing about friends is that they must communicate with each other. A good friend is a person who takes the time to listen to the other person. One of the most important things that I think a friend should have is a sense of humor. I like to laugh with my friends. I like to feel comfortable around my friends. It is nice to be able to talk and laugh with people who have similar interests. It is nice to share things with people and learn about their interests. You become a better person if you are able to learn things from others. Life is a journey. On that journey, you meet many people. Some of those people will change your life. You have to choose your friends with care. A good friend is worth more than all the gold in the world. A good friend will make your journey through life more pleasant. Make friends along the way, and the path through life will be very rewarding. A funny thing happened on the way to school. Last Friday, it was very windy. I was walking down the street with my friend John. We were having a difficult time walking against the wind. The wind was pushing against us, and we felt the force of it pressing against us. We even had a hard time breathing. We were walking slowly. We watched the leaves as they danced and twirled in the wind. We watched a plastic bag as it flew by us. We saw a little boy whose baseball cap flew right off his head. His cap flew along the sidewalk, and he had to chase it. He finally caught it, and he held it in his hands tightly after he got it back. The trees were swaying frantically; their branches swished and waved in the wild wind. John and I were hit by flying bits of paper and leaves. We laughed when a garbage can lid rolled along and hit John in the leg. We saw another garbage can rolling along the road as if it was alive. Everything was moving because of the wind. Then the funniest thing happened. I wasn't paying any attention, and a paper bag came flying up the street toward us. It hit me right in the face and covered my whole face. At first, I didn't know what had happened. I was blinded. I couldn't see where I was going. I stopped and held out my hands. When I stopped, the bag fell off my face. I looked at John. He was laughing very hard. He was laughing so hard that tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said that I looked very funny with the brown paper bag stuck to my face. I started to laugh too. We laughed about it all the way to school. John said that he wished he had a camera. He would have taken a picture of me with a bag on my face. Advice. Sometimes my mother gives me advice. She tells me to save my money for a rainy day. She says that I should eat my vegetables if I want to be strong when I grow up. She says that you reap what you sow. I didn't know what that one meant, so I asked her. She said that if you are good to people, they will be good to you. If you do bad things, then bad things will come back to you. My mother is always giving me advice. She says that a penny saved is a penny earned. I am still thinking about that one. Some of these things are difficult to understand. My mother is very wise. She says that she has learned from her mistakes. She tells me that she would like me not to make mistakes, but she says that everyone does make mistakes. 
the important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. My mother says that nobody is perfect. My mother tells my sister that time is precious. My sister wastes time, and my mother doesn't like that. My mother tells me to be true to myself. She says that I should not follow the crowd. I should listen to my own conscience and do what I think is right. She says that it doesn't matter if you fail at something. The important thing is that you try. If you've done your best, then that is all that matters. I listen to my mother. I think she gives very good advice. My mother has a lot of common sense. I hope I am as wise as she is when I have children of my own. Sometimes I wish that she would not give me so much advice. I think that I know what I'm doing, but in the end, I always remember what she has said, and I try to live by the standards that she has set for me. Take the advice that your parents give you. They only have your best interests at heart. A trip to the hospital. I have to get my tonsils out. I'm not really happy about it, but I'm tired of being sick and having sore throats. I have to go to the hospital two hours before my surgery. My mother will go with me. The nurses will take my temperature and check my blood pressure. They will make sure that I am ready for my operation. I will be dressed in a white gown and I will be wheeled down the hall to the operating room. I can't have anything to eat or drink for a long time before my surgery. My mother will walk down the hall with me. Then she will wave goodbye as they wheel me into the operating room. The doctor and the nurses will be busy in the operating room. They will be getting ready to perform my surgery. The doctor will say hello to me and tell me that he is going to put me to sleep. He will put something into my arm. He will tell me to count backwards from ten. I think that I will only say ten, nine, and then I will be fast asleep. I won't be awake for the surgery. When I wake up, I will be surprised that the surgery is over. My throat will hurt, and I probably won't feel very good. My mother will be there with me. The nurses will give me a drink and try to make me comfortable. I won't be in the hospital overnight. I will go home later in the day. My parents will have to make sure that I have a lot to drink. I can't eat any hard foods, or they will hurt my throat. I will sleep a lot because I will not feel very well for a couple of days. It won't take long before I recover from my surgery. Sometimes we need surgery to make us feel better. Hospitals can be a bit frightening, but the doctors and nurses are very nice, and their job is to make you better. What my cat did. One day I was sitting in a chair drinking a cup of tea. My cat came into the room and sat on my lap. She was quite content, and she sat there purring. My cat likes to drink water, and sometimes she drinks milk. I would never give her tea to drink. Cats just don't drink tea. We were sitting there quietly when suddenly my cat stood up. She was looking at something on the floor. She crouched down low and got ready to pounce. I saw what she was looking at. It was a huge centipede. I think that centipedes are ugly. They have many legs and they move very fast. I would hate to have one crawl over me. My cat jumped to the floor and she ran over to the centipede. She was incredibly fast. I was surprised that she caught the centipede. She put her paw on it and then she reached down. And ate the centipede. The centipede must not have tasted very good. My cat got a funny look on her face, and she looked like she was trying to get a bad taste out of her mouth. I was thinking that I would be sick if I ate a centipede. My cat looked at me, 
and jumped back up in my chair. She stuck her face in my teacup and took a big drink of tea. I was shocked. I had never seen a cat drink tea before. I think that the centipede must have tasted so bad that my cat just needed something to wash the taste out of her mouth. Guess what? I didn't finish my tea. I threw it out and washed out the cup. My cat has never had a drink of tea since that day. She has also never eaten another centipede. If a centipede walks by, she just pretends that she doesn't see it. If I was tiny, imagine what life would be like if you were two inches tall. You would have to be careful that nobody stepped on you. You would have to watch out for cats, dogs, and birds. It would be very dangerous, but just think of the things that you could do. You could live in a dollhouse or even a shoebox. You could use a bottle cap for a plate. You would have to wear doll's clothes. A stamp would make a lovely picture to hang on your wall. You could hide in a mouse hole or a drawer. You wouldn't need much food. You could probably live comfortably on the crumbs that people would leave on the table. A thimble would make a good cup. If you went outside, the grass would seem like a jungle. An insect would be huge and frightening. A puddle would seem to be an ocean. You could cross the puddle in a paper cup and use a spoon for an oar. A matchbox would make a good bed with a handkerchief as a bedspread. You'd brush your hair with a toothbrush, but you'd never find anything small enough to brush your teeth with. You could take a ride on the back of a mouse. You wouldn't find any books that were small enough to read, but you might read the back of a pill bottle. You could ride in a toy car and have a soup bowl for a swimming pool. A leaf could be your umbrella, and a mitten would make a great sleeping bag. If you used your imagination, you could think up something to use for almost all your purposes. Being small might be fun, but then again, it would be frightening. I'd be afraid of my pet cat. I wouldn't want a book to fall on me. I would be afraid of being swept away by a big gust of wind. I think I'd rather be my size. If I were a giant, if I were a giant, I wouldn't be able to fit in my house. I'd have to live in a building that had a high ceiling, but I'd probably have a hard time getting through the door. I'd have to make my own clothes, but where would I get a giant needle and thread to sew with? I couldn't ride in a car or a plane. I suppose I would just have to take giant steps to get from place to place. I would have to be very careful not to step on anybody or anything. When I talked, people would cover their ears. My voice would sound very loud to them. I wouldn't find shoes to cover my feet. I wouldn't find a knife and fork to eat my dinner with. I might have to use a rake as a fork. My dinner would be huge. What would I cook my dinner in? I certainly wouldn't find an oven big enough to put my dinner in. If I sneezed, it would be like a hurricane. If I fell down, it would be like an earthquake. I wouldn't have any friends because everyone would be too tiny for me to talk to. I think that being a giant would be very lonely. I couldn't have just one apple. I would have to have a lot of apples to fill me up. I would have to drink gallons and gallons of water to quench my thirst. I could never relax under a tree. I would be taller than all the trees. I don't think that being a giant would be fun. I won't ever make a wish to be a giant. I would rather be my height. I'm very happy the way I am.